The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Thought-provoking. Informative. Engaging. Are you ready to be inspired and equipped? And now, The Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Hey, welcome to the Comfort Zone with Ray Comfort. Don't touch that dial. I know I'm not Mark Spence and I'm not EZ. You are EZ in a Carl Kirby suit. I'm <laughs> like four EZs in a Carl Kirby suit. So. <laughs> now, I, I got to ask you, Ray, what did you do to run both of them off on the same day? I don't know. It must have been my halitosis or something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you carry the Tic Tac. Oh, the Tic Tac, the Tic Tac tactic. Yes, but you we didn't bring them in time because no. they both left. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Anyway, it's good to have you here, Carl. Oh, you didn't bring a jacket, so we got Jeff Sito's jacket. Now, for Dyson. those of you that know anything about me, I don't wear coats and ties unless I'm absolutely forced to. So guess what? I was forced to That's today. It. Um, and this is not my jacket. Diane was gracious enough Her to... Her husband is an aerospace engineer, so let's see if you can wow. lift yourself intellectually gonna... because you're in, walking in his shoes while it's wearing his coat. It's going to make me smarter. Yes, it's going to... Can I take it with me? <laughs> you can. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Um, by the way, I think I dated myself. I said, don't touch that dial. There's no such thing as dials anymore, right? <laughs> no, no, and you don't want to date yourself. It sounds weird. Oh, that, Just it, it take your wife weird. out on a date. Yeah, not good. You know that guy, I've watched your intro a number of times. He it really is comfortable. And he, he's as committed because he goes out in his, in his uh, uh, robe to witness. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> that's weird. So you better say who you are. For Whoa, those who hey, don't I'm know. Carl Kirby, uh, Ministry is Reasons for Hope, and uh, just happened to be out in California for a week doing a bunch of different ministry. And Ray, you're, thank you, sir, for letting me be with you. Oh, I mean that a lot. I mean that a lot. I really do. Um, hey, make sure you connect with Living Waters. Uh, they're on Facebook, uh, they're on YouTube. And if you're not on the tczlive.com uh, website, make sure you go there because you can watch these live. But then there's also great resources on there. You've got Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the whole works, man. Mm -hmm. You guys are like, savvy when yeah. it comes to social media. We've got to be. That's the way to reach the world. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Um, I know one thing. By the end of today's show, your normal viewers, they're really going to like EZ. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, hey can, so uh, I, I just say something before, oh, we, before okay. we start. I mean, um, Warren Buffett, I saw this morning, has given $1.2 billion to, to abortion, abortion groups. I saw that. That just sickened me. $1.2 billion. Think of the good oh. that could be done Amen. With that money, the orphanages, the, the water the, the, uh, that could be pumped into places, the education, whatever. Anything but the killing of children in the yeah. womb. It just sickened me. And, uh, and it, we just got to pray well, for that. Tie, tie into that, Ray. That video that's gone viral that oh, the that young girl? lady that yeah. goes in and yeah, videotapes gonna... herself having this. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's all happy. You're killing someone yeah. and you're smiling and... Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you it's think, how can things get worse? And then you see something like that. So yeah. we're giving another push for, for 180, 180movie.com. That Good. has the power to change people's minds about abortion, Amen. but it has the gospel in it, the biblical gospel, which has the power of God to salvation. So we're on four point, just nearly 4.5 million views. So please go to 180movie.com and spread it around. Send it to Warren Buffett. Man, that 180 movie is amazing. You guys did a great job. Um, can, can I share with you how... I met sure. you. I got saved May 15, 1987, okay? Uh -huh. May 15, 1987, I'm at a conference and a guy preaches the gospel, uh -huh. saved. Within a few weeks of that, firefighters for Christ. Uh -huh. Ever hear of them? A good bunch of people, <laughs> yeah, firefighters for Christ. I for got it. a cassette tape of Hell's Best Kept Secret. Could explain what a cassette tape is to oh, the yeah, new really, generation. To, to generation man. <laughs> it's like this little tiny thing that has wheels in it and a tape that Mm -hmm. Forget about it. But anyway, um, they gave me, uh, a representative of one of the guys that hands out materials gave me Hell's Best Kept Secret, and I listened to that tape rate, and I got to tell you, you had a big impact on my life. You really did. Wow. You didn't know me, but the fact that somebody was taking the message, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and handing it out, that's why I want to encourage people. You have no idea when you hand out a gospel tract, if you right. hand out a cassette, the impact that it has. I am, I am honestly a life that was impacted by somebody's obedience, mm -hmm. your obedience in preaching the message, but then somebody's obedience in handing it out. So, wow. And then I read Mantle of the Harlot, which is no longer that? around. I did. <clears throat> I did. That, got, <clears throat> that evolved into the way of the master. Okay. <clears throat> we dropped the harlot. Yeah, yeah, it was a kind of interesting cover, but I did read it. Did it, when you opened it up, did the demon manifest? <laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> yeah, well, we, we had a, 
are harder than the front, and she's very pretty, and when you open it up, when light struck the page, a blank page would manifest in about 15 seconds of a demon, a blue demon. Get out of here. No, I've got to stay for the program. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Yeah, you open it up, and, and in England, they wouldn't carry the book because they were so freaked out by it. They thought it was demonic, but I knew that when light struck a certain type of paper, that, that would happen, and so I got my printer to do that. It took a lot of working out. That's genius, and only, I only worked once. It didn't uh, work every time, so... Uh, and I just got to say, we have Scotty in today's program. Yeah. I forget. No, we don't. He's over in the other studio. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's cross Sorry. the other studio for Scotty. Hey, Scotty. Right. <laughs> Way over there. Ray, are you going to ask me about my glasses? Yeah, Scotty. Uh, I always wear glasses to make glasses. myself look a little more studious. But Whoa. today, <laughs> look at that. we've got something else. This so, is Google Glass. You look like a blind man, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie Wonder in the flesh. No, white. Um, no, I, uh, we've been uh, taking Google Glass, and it has, it's an amazing piece of technology. They're $1,500 to careful. get one, and you Ooh. can't buy one unless you're invited. And I uh, filled out an application, and lo and behold, they said, hey, you want to get one? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and Ray said, yeah. And so we've been <laughs> taking it down to Huntington Beach and videotaping the open airs. Uh, we're also uh, doing some live streaming that hasn't quite got worked out yet. We have some problems there, but we keep forging ahead. Can so, you explain what that is for people who don't know about Google Glass is? Um, if you can see this little section here, it's actually a display, like a, a HUD. HUD stands for, I think, Heads Up Display. And uh, so you can see in a corner of your vision uh, a, a display of the screen, and it's a computer that's in here. On this side is a touch-sensitive pad. The battery is back here. It's got a microphone and speakers, and uh, it's doing some amazing things. It's sampling stereo sound and then doing noise canceling. It, uh, it, it, it's just it's doing uh, video stabilization for the video that you take. It takes HD video. Wow. And uh, it connects to the internet, sends messages, gets directions on maps. It's it's a uh, a, a full fledged computer in here, and actually on the cutting edge. So and it's voice activated too. You, you, you're standing at Hunting Beach. There's a Google Glass on, and it just comes on. Yeah, turn take off. Take a picture. It. Take a picture. Do this. Make Record lunch. a video. I'll make do, a cup of tea. Do you know what that means, though? What? That means that today Scotty gets to answer all the questions because he's got the computer attached <laughs> yeah. to his eyes. So. You want to jump into this first question here? Yes, let's go for the first hey, question. Hey, we got an email from April, and April says, My coworker always says I believe, uh, let me say this, yeah, my coworker always says I believe in Jesus and the Bible, but Buddhists have their beliefs and Muslims theirs, etc. He says, For years in China during the Cultural Revolution, people were not allowed to believe in God and they lived just like we do now. They were born, they died, etc. Who's to say that Christianity slant Jesus is the right way? How would you answer that, Ray? Well, I'm going to hand it off to you because you're the guest. Well, I've got to hand it off to Scotty because he's got the, oh, I can't the studio. Him. Oh, sorry. Let's hand it off to Scotty because he's got the glasses. And we'll start with Scotty today because he's got the answers. Well, now I've got the uh, <laughs> seeing eye glasses so I can read my notes. Um, you know, we run into questions like this a lot at Huntington Beach, and it's a fairly simple answer. You want the truth, and you want uh, that, that which agrees with reality. Um, a falsehood or something unreal is not going to help anybody. And there is only one God. Uh, God validates. We need somebody from the outside uh, looking in who can tell us what the deal is all about. Uh, people live and die every day, but then what? You know, it's more than just a humanist view of uh, how to have a better life or how to be happy, you know, how to be happy here or uh, relationships and uh, doing right and wrong. One day we're going to stand before the God who is God, who has made all these things and also has a standard of right and wrong and morality. Uh, can only come from God. Otherwise, it's just everybody's opinion of what they think is right and what they think of, is wrong. And God has a day of judgment when he will judge all of And you're going to be answerable for That's it. Right. So you want to know what the truth is. You want to know what, what God's standard is. And uh, once you realize that, you realize also that uh, there's no hope for you.
you. The, and uh, that's real important information. And, uh, uh, but that, there, that God is good and that there is a way of escape and he's given his son Jesus Christ who died for our sins and rose again on the third day and conquered death and uh, has in store for us things that we can't imagine, no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for him. Well, we want to know about all those things, and that can only come from God himself. So we need his help, and the Bible is the word of God in which he's revealed to mankind his truth and what happens when you die. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and, Scotty, the way that I would also throw into that is that... Uh, who, who's to say? Jesus is to say. In John 14, 6, what did he tell us? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to me except by him. But why should we trust him? Well, I fall back on that, what is truth, and, and, and this guy, he talked about truth, and, and I use a simple illustration with folks just to kind of get conversations going. I'll ask them, how tall am I? All right? And they'll throw out, you know, six foot, six foot three, whatever, and I say, no, you're way wrong. And I pull out my ruler, and my ruler's like this big. And I say, I'm actually 12 foot tall. You see, I measure myself, and I'm 12 foot tall. And they're like, oh, no, that's not right. And I'm like, well, why is that not right? Well, your ruler's no good. My ruler's good. No, it's no good. No, my ruler's right. Your ruler's no good. And I'm like, well, who do you think you are, you judgmental person? You want to jam your ruler down my throat? My ruler's right. Your ruler's no good. Impasse, what are we going to do? You have to have a definition for truth. And a simple definition for truth is truth is that which has fidelity to an original. So if you want to know what truth is, you have to have a standard to judge the two rulers by. And we have those in museums across the land. We take our two rulers, compare it to the standard, and guess what? The ruler that you, most of you are hanging on to is going to be correct, not because you believed it or trained or brought up with it, but because when you compare it to the standard, it's correct. Christian, the Word of God is our standard, it's our ruler, and, and, and for too long now we've allowed the Bible to get relegated to fairy tale fable status, and people are throwing all their rulers at us, and we're embarrassed almost to hold up our ruler. So. How do we know? Jesus said. How do we know what Jesus said is true? That's when you can get into apologetics. But know this. Arguments will never bring anybody to the Lord Jesus Christ. You preach the gospel, you answer the questions, but you let the Holy Spirit do his thing. And so, hey Amen. You can buy your uh, fake ruler at Living Waters. Come. <laughs> hey, I want to cut. Yeah. You do. I'll, I'll give you an inch. You know, I, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Cut. Yes, yeah, all you get is an inch. <laughs> you know, I watched something. Uh, someone put a link on my Facebook page to a video I watched it yesterday. It was uh, a guy named Kevin Smith. Uh, your name might sound familiar, but he's a yeah. filmmaker, a sort of uh, uh, an artist or something. And I watched this video, and it took a lot of uh, grit on my part because it was just filthy language, the guy. Mm -hmm. and, and compassion looks past this pigsty to the prodigal, and I just had to do that. I just had to think, this guy would make a great Christian. He's a great speaker, but he told a story that just broke my heart, and it was the fact that he had a family gathering recently, didn't want to go, but when he, when he got with his family and his mom and daddy, he realized how proud they were of their kids, and he said it was wonderful. Five o'clock in the morning, call from his brother. Dad's in hospital. He says, Dad's always going to hospital. He says, no, get to the hospital now. Got there, his dad was dead. Mm. And, his, and he said his mother was just sobbing like he'd never seen. It was horrific. Went in and his dad was lying there dead. His beloved father, he laid his head on his, uh, on his chest like he did as a little boy. And he came out, had a smoke. And all this is among the filthiest language he's saying, it, but it's so moving. And he says, my brother said, Dad went out screaming. He said, my dad kept saying, I'm on fire, I'm on fire, and he died screaming. So this guy's philosophy was he was going to live life to the fullest because he knows that everyone's going to go out screaming. Right. Not so. If you go on an elevator that's 80 stories up and you've got no faith in that elevator, you're going to be screaming, either verbally yeah. or in your mind. If you've got total faith in the elevator, then you'll have no fear at all, absolutely none. And so if you choose to have a life without fearing, without faith in God, should I say, you're going to be terrified, especially when you die. You're going to be a screamer, either in your mind or verbally. But if you have faith in God, as we're told to, to trust the Lord and His promises, when you pass through death, you'll go at peace because you know exactly where you're going. So I was very moved. So every single human being has a will to live. The question was, what makes Christianity different? It is the answer to man's greatest dilemma, death itself. Hebrews 2, I think verse 15, 14, 15 says, all our lifetime we're subject to the fear of death. When you come to Christ, God releases you from the power of death and the fear of death. That's what separates Christianity from the other big religions. God grants everlasting life to all those who repent and trust in Christ. So that stands infinitely head and shoulders above yeah. every, every uh, other religion. I love your analogies, man. They are so powerful. Um, and one of the arguments that I get a lot, though, is because 
people aren't trusting the Word of God. Right. And, and I see a mentality, unfortunately, in the church. It's kind of like, a, oh, well, you know, God, I know what you wrote, but let me tell you what you meant. I know you said you did this, but you didn't <laughs> quite understand this, so we're going right. to help you out. So um, you were talking about a video. Well, we created that short those sets of oh, short yeah. videos that debunked. Yes. And we've got one today on uh, God didn't mean what he said, really going after the fact that is the Word of God the Word of God? Can you really trust it? So we've got a short video here that uh, let us show that to you. I love these. They're great. I got a question for you, Christian. Do you really believe God meant what he said in the Bible? First off, we need to remember that the Bible is actually God's word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scripture is breathed out by God. 2 Peter 1.21 says, For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 states that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it really is the word of God. So these verses, among others, claim that the Bible is God's word. But is God's word true? Well, ponder these propositions properly presented in paraphrase perfection. Psalm 119.160. John 17, 17, Proverbs 35, Ephesians 1, 13, Colossians 1, 5, and Numbers 23, 19, just to name a few. These declare God's word to be true, the word of truth, the sum of truth, the power of truth, and that he cannot lie. Because of that, the Apostle Paul declares we refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. So, according to the Bible, the Christian's ultimate standard, God can't lie, the Bible is God's word, and God's word is truth and ought not to be tampered with. Now, let's peek at some of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 to see if he really meant what he said there, okay? Don't murder. Eh, pretty clear. Probably meant that one. What about don't lie? Pretty ironic if he lied about a commandment that forbids lying. Then there's don't covet, don't commit adultery, don't worship other gods, honor mom and dad. Is there really any confusion about these? Sound like poetry to you? These are the Ten Commandments, people, written directly by God. They aren't the Ten Songs, illustrations, or Ten Metaphors, okay? And they're obviously written at face value with clear meaning and purpose. Selah. But what about other scripture that God didn't directly write on special tablets? Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Now, which part do you think that God didn't really mean? Which part should we discard because somebody says otherwise? Which part is just metaphysical, metaphorical, just a spiritual lesson? I'm going to go out on a limb and say none of it because it's all true historical stuff. So what's my point? What's the big deal? Well, it's this. The same non-poetic, clear, historical, straightforward style used to write the Ten Commandments, the Gospels, Paul's letters, and most of the other scripture is also used in Genesis 1-11. through 11. What's the point? I'll tell you. Some Christians think that section of scripture doesn't mean what it says. I guess because some guys in lab coats told them the earth formed over billions of years and what really happened is completely different from what the Bible teaches. Man's fallible understanding trumps God's infallible word all of a sudden. So I guess that God didn't mean what he said when he had Moses write, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, dot, 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 and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. <gasps> Six days. Now that's the part God must not have meant. Well, just in case you think that, let's shimmy slide over to the very Ten Commandments, which we already established as something God really meant, and take a gander. Exodus 20, 11. Right dab in the middle of the fourth commandment, it reads, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. There it is again. Six days. So now what? You're going to believe that God only meant nine and a half of the Ten Commandments? Careful, because Jesus said if you believe Moses, you'd believe me. So if you don't believe God meant what he said in the first few chapters of Genesis, why believe the Ten Commandments or the words of Jesus, the Gospels, or the words of Paul? And if you only believe some of it, how do you know what to pick and choose? Tamper, tamper, people. Now let's get to the bread and butter here, okay? God could have made heaven and earth over billions of years or in six seconds or in 16 hours, or he could have done it by throwing happy dust around or by pulling it out of a giant hat. But since he cannot lie and his word is truth, he couldn't have done it any other way than the way he said he did it. Make sense? So this idea that God didn't mean what he said, especially when it comes to how and when he created everything, has been debunked. Adios. Boy, I love that. I love the way the guy talks quickly. I really... <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's good. You know, the young people, they have a 2.2 second attention span. So if yeah. you want to go after man, you got to you got to go. That's and true. So that's what we try to do. By the way, there's a, six of those on a DVD, and it comes with a study course, and they're available for those of you on tczlive.com. Uh, just look, like, almost right above... What's the name of the here. Don't do that to me. <laughs> tczlive.com. I've been practicing that. Uh, but there's a resource button right up above my head. And uh, when you push that, it says DVDs. Go there and you can uh, you can get them there. It's it's a great tool to hopefully get conversations going because that's, to me, what the films were really initially designed for. Show something, get a conversation going, and then... Uh, and there's just dry humor all the way through I that. I love which, it. which I love, too. Yeah, it's that's that's me. So, hey, by the way, um, I saw like one of the past shows and Mark was talking about how they filled up their tour for the Grand Canyon doing mm -hmm. a double-decker bus thing. Well, can I tell them about my trip? Tell us. I've only got two spots left, man. If you go to our Facebook page, Reasons, plural, Reasons for Hope, um, you go there, there's a little uh, link on there to lead you to where our tour is. In June, we're going to take people down the river, on the river, not doing a bus thing. We're not flying, you know, like they did. We're going down in it, man. Seven days, <laughs> doing the river. Swimming? 
Uh, sometime, but this is cold water. It comes out of the dam at like uh, 38 degrees. Oh, well, that oh, is dude, it's quick. That's freezing. They're quick baths. You're yeah. like, bing, bing, you're in and out <laughs> real quick. But uh, if you'd like to join us, come on, you know, get, there's two spots left. Take a look at it. Um, but hey, we're here for questions. People got questions, so let's run into it here. You ready? Mm -hmm. Carmen sends this one. I have just two questions, which I hope you can answer. Where did God come from? And what evidence can you give to support creationism, intelligent design, other than the Bible? Well, I want to make use of your brain while you're here, right. so you spit it out. All right. Um, where did God come from? You know, it's kind of like asking people, what does purple taste like? <laughs> what does red smell like? You know, I do that when I get the smart... Now, not everybody's a smart aleck, but sometimes you get smart alecks that uh -huh. like to come up and play games with you. And if I feel like this is a smart aleck, I'll actually ask them that. What does purple taste like? And they're like, what? That's a dumb question. I'm like, so is yours. Uh -huh. You know, if you want to play games, do it on somebody else's dime. You're serious? Let's go, brother. I'll give you all night long. Where do, who created God? From the Word of God, from the historical biblical account, God has no beginning. He has no end. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. No one created God. He is the uncreated creator. And by the way, if you don't like that, you still have a problem because now you've got to go back to the point that they're both believers and non-believers, we both have a creator, and they both begin with G. Mine is a capital G, God. Yours is a little G, gas. Because what evolution will teach, naturalistic processes teach, is that over the course of 14 billion years, and this is a direct mm -hmm. quote, mm -hmm. over the course of 14 billion years, hydrogen gas transformed itself into mountains and butterflies, the music of Bach, and you and I. Mm -hmm. So you have a creator, and it's called hydrogen gas. You know, which one makes more sense of what we see in the world around us is one of the points that yeah. I always come back to. Yeah. No, gas is not good. No, gas is not Can I read you a quote here? Go for it. Okay, here's a quote. From historic Newberry, Michigan, comes more evidence in support of the Big Bang Theory of creation. On July 12th, an abandoned ranger's headquarters at Taquamendon Falls State Park blew sky high, sending debris 100 feet into the atmosphere and alarming campers 14 miles away. The explosion now has been traced to bat manure that for decades had been uh, generating methane gas until in mid-July it became highly volatile and kaboom. Scientists believe that a similar cataclysm eight million years ago gave us the beginnings of the universe, though even scientists cannot account for those early bats and those <laughs> of a religious disposition. A world created by bat dung is too depressing to contemplate. <laughs> so, you know, we both believe in a creator, gas or God, and so I, I just say, look, at the world that we live in, it screams that there's a God that did what he said that he did. Absolutely. And what's some of the evidence? Well, you've done a lot of this sort of a thing, and I say, whoever sent this in probably did it on a computer, uh -huh. and they did it on a keyboard. And I guarantee you that that computer that you sent it in didn't just happen, man. There was intelligence involved. I mean, unless it was Very a... Very intelligent. Uh, unless it was a, you know, a, a PC. <laughs> you know, if, if they're only PCs, evolution yeah. might have a chance. But since it's a Mac, Macs are around, no, there's no chance that evolution happened. So, um, Scotty, what do you have to say on this? You've got the glasses, man. Bring uh, us some uh, insights yeah, yeah, yeah. on this. Well... I am not <laughs> reading from Google Glass. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, creation uh, creation itself is the evidence of a creator, and uh, conscience is the evidence of uh, those immaterial laws that govern uh, not only the universe, but uh, right and wrong. And uh, you can't, we know uh, from uh, uh, just observation and common sense that you need a cause to create something and so creation can't have created itself it needed a cause and then that's what uh, where everybody stumbles because they say oh well who created God well you know in Psalm 90 uh, which Moses wrote by the way he says from everlasting you are God and uh, God comes from everlasting he created time and space and matter and uh, time is a uh, particular uh, uh, parameter of the universe that he created it's not something that you can apply to God you can't apply beginning and ending to God it's uh, it, it, I forget what that uh, fallacy is but it's the wrong category it doesn't apply to God God has no beginning and no ending he's the cause of all things and the very term God means all-powerful all-knowing and if there was anything else that created God or someplace that he came from then that would be God or it would be higher than God no uh, it, it, we're, we have fine 
finite minds, but uh, like Carl pointed out before, we need to trust God in what he says because he's revealing, some, uh, revealing things that we cannot know otherwise. It comes from the outside. All of creation evidences something from the outside, aim, purpose, a reason why, design, organization, uh, the laws of physics and nature and logic and all these things. But also we have a conscience and we know right from wrong and you and I are responsible for the right and wrong regardless of whether you ever read the Bible or not. You know that it's wrong to murder, to lie, to cheat, Amen. to steal, to commit adultery and you're going to be held accountable for that. Uh, according to what God has said. So we need somebody who sees from the outside in and can tell us what the truth is. Amen. I'm not a very good host, Ray. We only got through like two questions, man. I, I'm sorry. I'm like long-winded or something. No, no, you, it's great. You're just long. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to ask you, though. What is your favorite tract? Oh, the trillion dollar bill. The trillion dollar bill? Yeah, we're keeping up with the government. If the government go any further, we're going to do the Brazilian dollar bill <laughs> with the Brazilian president's <laughs> picture on the front. I'll tell you the one that I like. It used to be the butterfly. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, the, yes, that's right. All right. Yeah, we take that to the convalescent homes. I love that mm -hmm. one. Yeah, it was but great. I saw your new one, the pulling it out of the. Oh, isn't that great? That is awesome. It is. It's awesome. I that is it. awesome, man. Yeah. So thank you for that. I, I mean, it's, a, it's amazing. It's not original. I found it somewhere and we oh. adapted it. Well, that means I can take Adaptation. it from you. I can oh, take you it from take you. It from us. Yeah, you're yes! very welcome. So We're going to have something cool, too. Oh, guys. Well, Ray, seriously, thank you so much for letting me be with you, man. I, I apologize we didn't get through more, and I apologize to the viewers because there were some great questions here, so that means we're going to have to come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah, in a few seconds, what do you do in, in London universities? Oh, I love taking people through uh, museums, uh, London Museum of Natural uh -huh. History. Take them through, here's what the world says, here's what the Word of God says, here's what we actually see. And when uh -huh. you do that, it's amazing what you see in the world screams that God did what He said that He did. And Smithsonian do the same, same thing? Same thing. Any zoo, any museum, any aquarium. And you talk you loudly, do. so I'm Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You start with three, you get a couple of people to follow you. So, uh, <laughs> you see, this is my approach. I may not be an on-the-box guy, but I'm a guy that loves to get out and engage folks in conversations. And that's what I love about the comfort zone, right? Thank uh -huh. you for what you're doing. Uh, this truly is a show that is trying to push you out of your comfort zone. Yes, be comfortable, but I'm praying that you are pushed out of your comfort zone so that you'll actually go talk and share the gospel with people. There are people dying and going to hell. They need to hear the truth. Good work. Amen. Amen. For questions about the comfort zone with Ray Comfort, or to submit questions for future shows, please email us at email at tczlive.com. That's email at tczlive.com. The Comfort Zone is an outreach of living waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll-free 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel. Behold, the gospel track. Gospel tracks come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are funny, some are serious, and they range from short and sweet to much more in depth. And every good track contains two elements the law and the gospel. Now, the law needs to be in a track in order for the reader to understand why they need a savior, right? Because they've broken God's law. And the gospel needs to be in the track because, well, that's the whole point of a gospel track. The Gospel. This is our Million Dollar Bill track. It's deliriously popular. People love it. We have sold millions of these tracks, and it's because it's so easy to give out. You can go up to a stranger and just say, hey, did you get your million? And they go, what? See, that's a million dollar bill. You'll think of me when you get the change. Or you can even go for the trillion. We want to keep up with the government. So they say, did you get your trillion? Trying to fix the deficit. Got the Gospel message on the back. Real easy to give out. You can get it at livingwaters.com.